What is it I love about Rally? Rally to me is like the greatest form of motorsport because it's just you in the car uh, feeling the, like, the flow of the road, I guess. There's nothing else that interferes with that. It's just you're in your own little space. You get in this sort of like flow of this rhythm when you're listening to the pace notes, focusing on what corner's coming up next. And you don't necessarily know, whereas with track racing, you learn the circuit and it gets, I guess, a bit more repetitive in terms of you know exactly which millimeter. You're sort of focusing on very fine margins of you've got to break at this exact breaking point, whereas rally has the um, that sort of unknown factor of you, you are listening to the notes and uh, you're driving across corners that maybe you've only seen a couple of times in the recce. Um, and they're always, it's always a different corner. You're, you're coming up through the stage, you're not repeating the same sections over and over again. And yeah, particularly in the New Zealand roads where they, the corners flow and connect to each other with the camber, it's just the greatest feeling to, to feel at one with the car. Hat? No hat. Hey, I'm Matt Smith, aka Monkey Matt, and I'm competing in the Rally New Zealand Esports Series Finals. Mm. <laughs> it's going to be Monkey Matt Smith who takes the stage victory by a second over Zach Taylor. Uh, so, the Rally New Zealand Esports Series is a series being put on by Motorsport New Zealand and Rally New Zealand um, to promote the Auckland Rally in the Battle of Jacks Ridge that is taking place in place of what was going to be. Rally New Zealand in the WRC, which unfortunately couldn't play, take place this year. So they're putting on this big promotional event, the first sort of test event for Motorsport New Zealand getting into esports um, and taking place on WRC 9, which is my favorite racing series. So I had to get amongst it. So I've always been playing the WRC series games just because I love rally. That's kind of like my passion. Um, and when esports WRC came along a few years ago, uh, I saw that online and got involved with it, eventually ended up getting to the uh, world finals in the second year of the competition and went over to Germany to compete in that, um, which was a huge experience. It was at the Hyundai Motorsport, uh, like the WRC r rally team's factory, um, which, yeah, amazing and finished fifth in the world in that competition. So it was pretty awesome. I think it was another Gran Turismo event, which I qualified for. Um, and they had the finals in the theater at Sky City. So there was like a live audience. They had a uh, Lamborghini and I think maybe a McLaren next to it up on stage behind us, eight of us lined up live on um, TV and everything. So it was crazy. Like, that was the first like big, like people are there specifically to see you, yeah, not just because of us. Yeah. Is this like a great place for you and an awesome tournament for you to show your skills? Like Gran Turismo Sport on live, live on Sky Sport. What does that mean for you? This is amazing, eh? this is the best opportunity and to have the whole crowd here, it's just been spectacular. Nerve wracking, but awesome. <laughs> that was huge. But I found out I qualified for that maybe a couple, few weeks before, like it was confirmed that I'd actually done enough to qualify. But uh, I'd already spent the whole year playing WRC and competing in the WRC eSports, which runs through the real WRC season. And I'd qualified for the World Finals at this point. But the World Finals were like two days, I think, or like the day after the LPL event. And because they were in Germany, I had to get to Germany in that time. So kind of like the default assumption would be, oh, you're going to have to pick one. You're going to have to not do the LPL event because it's going to clash. It's not going to work. But I was like, no way I'm going to give up this opportunity. I spent like hours like searching through flight records and stuff so I could find there was just literally one flight that was going to be able to fit both of them in. So I, I competed on stage at Sky City Theatre. Then my parents were there. I literally jumped in the car afterwards and then drove straight to the airport, jumped on the plane that night and flew over to Germany and competed um, in the eSports WRC like the next day with definitely not enough sleep in my system. Uh, I actually had to miss, I had to miss go-karting with, I think they had Andreas, no it wasn't, with Danny Sordo. I missed go-karting with Danny Sordo. Um, over there because I arrived late because there was the only way I could fit doing both events in. But I was just so keen to do both events because I love it. It's really bad. Like when I see opportunities that I think are a good opportunity in sim racing, I like have to go for it. I can't stop myself, even when it means like sacrificing other things. 
After taking the last two stages, on 65 points. Second place, Matthew Norton on 55 points. Zach Taylor uh, sitting in third place on 51 points. Kevin Lang, 34 points in fourth. I remember being like very far off my best. I was not comfortable with the way I was driving. Uh, definitely not living up to like sort of the level I was driving at during practice. Um, but obviously it was like, it was a super cool to be there in a live environment again, which we've sort of missed out for, on for a long time. And it was, is always a lot of fun. In terms of the actual racing, like it got very close, very quickly. The first stage I was behind, I think I finished like third or fourth. And that's where I was like, that was a bad stage. I'm worried that I might be pushing it to try and qualify here because I was definitely, definitely keen to qualify. It's so motivated to try and get that. But um, once I sort of settled down, maybe like halfway through that stage, because you can see the leaderboard while you're driving, which is became a little bit distracting, but um, at least it gave me sort of a reference of where I was at. And halfway through that stage, I kind of started, started to settle down and I think I maybe got back past someone on the leaderboard or at least it was flickering um, as to whether I was catching up. Uh, so I started to feel more comfortable and then into the second stage was able to sort of drive sort of more the way I would like. Still definitely not as good as I would like but closer to where I think I should be. Um, and that's where I think I won that stage and managed to sort of get the motivation but it would get the uh, encouragement, like the, uh, the feeling that I could actually compete and, and get the qualifying spot um, and push on through the rest of the stages and then I remember Going into the last stage, I kept I actually kept checking the leaderboard between stages to make sure how close it was or whether I could qualify, whether I could still finish the top in the semi-final. Uh, and going into the last stage, it was reasonably comfortable. I was out in front in terms of the points, but I was still like telling myself, I want to win in style. I want to win this last stage. Um, and so that, that moment when I crossed the finish line and I, so, I sort of had to pause because it had been so close through the end of the stage. Through the middle of the stage, uh, I don't know how much detail I need to get into here, but through the middle of the stage I could see on the timing that I was ahead and it wasn't kind of flicking back and forward like it does sometimes if you get too close to the guy behind you, it'll start like switching. So I was like kind of feeling comfortable, but then sort of in the last couple of sectors he caught back up. And so through different corners we would like switch the lead back and forth. So through the last sector I was like all in, like committed, I wanted to win that stage for sure. And then when I crossed the finish line, I had kind of had to pause for a second and wait for the times to come up to confirm it. Because I just crossed in front of him by one tenth of a second is what it came down to. And that's when I jumped up in excitement because I <laughs> I'd finally knew I'd qualified and, and qualified the way that I wanted to. What was your biggest surprise over the weekend? Um, <laughs> the biggest surprise was how far I was off the pace, but then how quick Dub True was. Because sometimes you can be off the pace and it can be down to the fact that it's in the live environment or the rig is different to what you've got. So I was kind of expecting to be a little bit slower than I had been at home. But then the fact that Dub True, um, Tim, showed up and actually set like the world record in his like semi-final run was absolutely insane and was like a real shock that holy crap I need to actually put the work in if I want to compete with this guy. Dub True aka the Double Duck he won the other semi-final at Armageddon and is a friend I've known online for quite a long time. Part of what we call the Monkey Motorsport Club. They do a lot of racing together. He's shown that he's very fast. Um, and particularly fast at rally games. So when Hayden Patton put on his Dirt Rally 2 event, um, we sort of both joined in and, and were comparing times and all the rest of it. And he was just like instantly quick on Dirt Rally 2. And then so when this competition came out, I was kind of motivating him to get involved as well because I thought it would be cool. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a PC, so I couldn't actually practice with him online. Um, he was just playing on PS4 and he was setting like world records on PS4. So I was like, yeah, okay, he's on the pace. But then for him to show up at the live event and actually set world records like on the PC as well, which is going to be slightly different, different steering wheel to what he's got. And he just came in like top form. Um, yeah, the finals are going to be hectic. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know. Sometimes, like, I do ask myself, where the hell is the end goal? But it's not even necessarily about the end goal. It's about, like, the ride along. I'm just enjoying it at the moment. I don't know. I, I'm just open. I just enjoy motorsport. And so if I can make motorsport full time, this is something I've talked about since I was, like, a kid. Um, and that is kind of, like, making motorsport full time has kind of looked very different over the years. So as a kid, it was like, I want to be a rally driver or driving real cars. I didn't even, like, this wasn't even a career. Like, sim racing wasn't even a thing, um, really, back then. And since it's developed, it's been like, oh, I want to do eSports WSC. Oh, FIA Gran Turismo is pretty cool. And now there's also, oh, streaming has been a lot of fun on Twitch and making videos on YouTube. Um, and then commentating has been something I've been enjoying on sim racing as well. So there's all these different ways that it, it still could go, and I'm definitely open to all of them. But um, yeah, just chasing with the fun there. And if I can make the fun actually pay for my food, then that would be the ultimate dream, I think. It's quite a rallyist answer if you think about it. Because you, you speak as if you're just curious to see what's wrong in this. Yep, yep. I mean, and we don't know what's around there, do we? It's a blind crest. <laughs>